Bishop Masinde, Apostle Kimani, Reverend Julian, all the ministers and servants of God present, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker and teacher, Anthony Kahura Mwangi. bit about Pastor T? Yeah. All right. Pastor T, as he is famously known, is a minister of the gospel in Kenya and the senior pastor of Life Church International Limuru in Kiambu County. Pastor T received the call into ministry after high school in 2005 through a prophetic announcement and launched into full-time ministry in 2014 when he founded the Truth Mentorship Society. He began as a gospel rapper back in 2005. He has won a couple of awards. Just so you guys know, he's been nominated for Mwafaka, Groove Awards, and Bambika Video Awards, where he won the best hip-hop video and reggae song videos. Pastor T. Pastor T is also an author. He's a renowned corporate and conference speaker. He's a kingdom business trainer, a mentor, a father to many young people, globally operating under the apostolic grace. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Pastor T. at that poster I'm the youngest and I have to admit my mother saw the poster and asked me what are you doing there because my mama didn't know who she gave birth to but I told her mom it is time for nobody's If God has to receive the glory, he must change some patterns. Some of us don't come from homes where our fathers were pastors. Our background is rap music, hip-hop music, but now preaching Jesus. And I want to appreciate Rev Kula Allow me to share. There is a time Rev met the three of us. We were three young people. And he came and said hi to us. And I looked at him and I said, I know men that know him. And they would have booked an appointment and taken me to him. But I told the Lord, I want our paths to meet on the pathway of assignment. I told the Lord, increase my capacity so that we can meet on the path of assignment and Rev I'm so grateful thank you for hearing God on behalf of our generation I want to appreciate Bishop J.B. Masinde he, he once invited me to Deliverance Church Umoja to sing Maisha Finje Finje and the elders called me and asked me, do you know Bishop? I said, no. 
and they said, he has never invited a rapper in this house. <laughs> no, you are special. And so Bishop, I left that church knowing that I'm special. And I don't think there's another rapper who has ever come. We bless the Lord. I want to appreciate Apostle Kemani William. They say, when you sense the hand of God is upon a man, you better partner with that man. And we can all bear witness the hand of God is upon Apostle Keman. And as Rev Kula spoke in the morning, God is using him to break ceilings so that some of us will not suffer. And we are watching some and thank you for raising the bar. We want to appreciate Mama. Thank you. I want to appreciate Mom Bishop. We really admire the ministry you have. I want to appreciate Pastor Fred, test, test of testimonies. And I want to appreciate our father all the way from Thika Redeemed Gospel Church. And all, all the fathers and all the ministers. And I want us to set the motion for this meeting. We never gathered here in thousands just to come and have another time. We came here for encounters. We came here to start something in the spirit. We came here to announce revival in the territories of East Africa. We came here to see what we have been hearing. They have said revival is coming. I don't know how the former looked like, but I know my God is moving in a new way. And I know we are here because we are hungry. And I want us to set the motion for this meeting. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, that he gave fast apostles. Maybe we can look at it before we release a sound and set this meeting on motion. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, this is why we are gathered here. It is called an apostolic meeting. He gave fast apostles. And God has appointed this in the church. Fast. Fast. That name fast means proton. It means rank and pioneer. That is why the early church was not evangelistic. It was apostolic. Because in the ranks of eternity, it is fast. So if there has to be revival, look at the order. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles. This is the order in the spirit. The Lord gave first apostles. That name apostle means the sent ones. It is from apostolos, the sent ones. The first man that exercised an apostolos dimension was Alexander the Great. And he was known for conquering territories and converting them to the culture of the Greek. So we are sent to conquer territories. That is why we are moving from denomination to apostolic. Oh, Jesus. That's why the walls must be broken. If we have to see the power of the first church, we must know the Lord. When he gave out the great commission, it was not in Pentecost. Pentecost 120 received the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues. But when he was ascending, he gathered the 11 apostles. And he says in Matthew 28, Go ye into all the nations, teaching them, teaching them, and baptizing them. That 
that is not an evangelistic commissioning. Oh, by the way, the work of soul winning is not for evangelists. Because among the fivefold, evangelists are given to the body of Christ. They are not given to the world. The work of winning souls is for every son of God. But listen, evangelists carry a sound of hope. And that is why they resonate with the fields. But they are territories that answer to apostles. You are about to witness apostolic crusades. Oh, Jesus. When apostles go in an area, they don't address men. They address gates and principalities. And when gates are addressed and principalities, men are released. That's why it took Paul to enter into Ephesus to deal with the goddess Diana and Artemis. When that goddess power collapsed, Timothy could run a church in Ephesus. That is why he gave fast apostles. The Lord is bringing the church back to order. And apostles, they go to nations. Go into the nation. The word nation there is ethnos. It means tribe community. Rev loves the word community. It does not mean church. And in that community, that ethnos teach them now. Mark says the gospel of the kingdom. The name gospel there is gospelos meaning the good news. That good news was the news carried by a warrior from war. And it was the news we have conquered. So the gospel is the news that the devil has lost and we conquered on Calvary. So we enter to interact with the ethnos. You can never change Nairobi until you change the ethnos, the community. Because Nairobi was a land until Maasai entered and they said Nairobi, a cool area. They named the territory. So you cannot conquer the territory until you conquer the ethnos. Oh, now this is apostolic. So, and then he said, baptizing them, not people, but their communities. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Listen, believers know water. But communities don't know that baptism. The Greek word there is baptizo. It is let them be drowned in the name, the character of the Father, the character of the Son, the character of the Holy Ghost. We came to preach to the ethnos. We came to declare to the ethnos of our community. We brought the baptizo of the nations under the order of Zion. Sorry, you know, I know you have baptized you quoting that scripture. Rev said, when another sound comes, there is adjustment. That baptism is of nations, it's not souls. Ah. All of them may not get born again, but you can enter a nation and before they declare election results, they are worshiping. Listen, these are the signs of labor. Uh, uh, it's not about who was declared. It is on national TV for more than four hours. Jesus was lifted. The culture of this kingdom is penetrating in areas we never thought. And that's why the Lord must begin to now introduce the church to the apostolic sound. We are moving from sermons and messages to an apostolic voice. And this is what happens. I have a young daughter 
who cannot even call me, she called me Dada. She cannot even say Daddy. But when I give her my phone, she knows where cartoons are. When she gets bored, she presses the next. Why? In the conformity of creation, she was ordained to enter in a world of technology. That, that system is in her. You are son for years can open things in your phone you have never seen. Why? They were born in a certain age. Now, there are young people who will not resonate with evangelistic preaching because they were born to answer to apostolic sound. That is why this meeting has another generation. If you look at their faces, they may not look born again. They have piercings, they have tattoos, they have dreadlocks. But listen, they were born for another sound. Now that's our language. Sometimes we preach to them in shame because it's not about grammar. It's about the content settling. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, welcome for an apostolic meeting. The Bible says, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on them. You may not hear utter cause of healing, but at the release of the word, viruses will begin to live. Because when you deliver the word, the word delivers the people. And so I announce under this anointing, whatever God cannot carry, you cannot carry. Under this atmosphere, whatever is not in God, let it live your life. Let us release a sound. Ah. Somebody release a sound. a shrine which doctors don't buy seats because they have activated a demonic atmosphere that as you enter in that atmosphere you cannot sit that dimension happened in the bible where the glory of El Elyon fell and no one could minister before the lord may it fall again Jesus okay let's have our seats I teach a few things you guys you are standing with me feel how pastors feel yeah. hallelujah as we talk about revival in this time that I'm here I will talk about two things today I want to talk about sent from God and then as the Holy Ghost leads, we will look at the matter of chariots. Now, John chapter number one and verse six. Revival is not an event. It is something that happens because there are men that came from a certain location. Everybody read. 
Now, let us look at grammar. The Bible does not say send by. It says send from. It is a language of location. My spiritual father is Apostle David Juma. When I came, I called him. And I told him, Daddy, I'm coming. Now, this apostolic language because it's about fatherhood. I told him, Daddy, I'm going. And I'm going in your name and your grace. And he said, I bless you. Send my greetings. So I was sent by. But if I came from his house, I would have been sent from. Now, men that change the world, they are not sent by God. They are sent from God. There is a place they are coming from. Psalms 91. Them that dwell, not visit. Men that carry revival, there is a place they dwell. I came to call men back to their place of dwelling. The secret place is not where we visit. It is where we dwell. We don't run to the secret place. We come from the secret place. There was a man. Finally God found a man. Because in the Old Testament. He said is there a man. To build a hedge. And stand in the gap. But finally. There was a man. Sent. From God. Today we are here to send men. From God. Some of you have abandoned your prayer altars. A new fire will come upon the life. There will be a new activation. When men are sent from God. You cannot ignore their message. Because in that area, you don't speak like a man. You speak like God. The first man that was sent from God is the man Elijah. We know the Bible says in 1 Kings 17 that Elijah came from Tishbe. That is the writer. But the man told us where he came from. When he stood before the king, and Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitant of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel live, before whom? So you know where he came from. There is a place he was standing. That dimension is called, Here I am, O Lord. Not what God would do, it is the language of, The first question was, Adam, Adam, where are you? Because he was not here I am. Okay. The first question in the New Testament is where is he? In the Old Testament is where are you? In the New Testament is where is he? Now this is the paradox. In the New Testament, it was the wise men who studied the stars. They were astrologers. For lack of a better word, witches. And they used to be employed by kings to give intelligence to kings. So they will, that was the system of Babylon. So when they gathered Daniel, they put him among the wise men. What they did not know, Daniel was not a wise man by intelligence of realms. He was a wise man by the resident of a spirit, which is called the spirit of wisdom. And those who are the guarders of thrones. But when they saw the star, they never came to give counsel to Jesus. They asked, where is he that we may worship? You know, we live in a time where men have exalted witches. I want to assure you, there is a power that they bow unto. Now listen, Elijah says, I stand. And he begins to declare to Ahab. This was not a meeting like this where we have thousands. It was a meeting of one audience. The king and maybe the goddess of the throne. Because Elijah was tired to live in a territory 
where it is hijacked by the worship of Baal. Until men are tired, there are responses that can never be heard. It takes a tired nature, not just to stand, but to begin to make demands concerning Kenya. And you begin to say, Lord, for how long will wickedness prevail in Kenya? Give me something so that as I show up, they will know I'm coming from. And he said, oh king, as long as I live, it shall not rain unless at my word. That area, you don't just receive the word of God. You also receive the God of the word. You don't say thou says. You speak the way he was speaking. He said, it shall not rain. Unless at my word, the destiny of Israel is locked up in my speech. There is a place where men can stand and they receive the word of God and they become one with the word. As they speak, they speak like the sender. Of course, the king never believed, he ignored him. But the word has been released. That is why when the drought affected Israel, a widow was commanded to feed the prophet because if the prophet died God was waiting on his word to open the heavens now Elijah touched a dimension that Jesus was introducing to Peter that I will give you the keys whatever you open is open before the New Testament the man walked in the realities that Jesus was lecturing apostles about because in the realm of the spirit, there are no testaments. There is no old or new. It is perpetual eternity. That realm, we don't have testaments. You enter, you realize, before the foundations of the earth, the lamb had been slain. The earth brought the essence of time. But in eternity past, Christ had died. Okay. Let me bring the sound home. That is why on Calvary, the sun disappeared. The sun is what measures time. Because the death of Jesus was not 2,000 years ago. It was eternity past. The, the element that measures time had to disappear because eternity had invaded humanity. It, ah, yeah, yeah. it was an eternal moment in the time frame of humanity. That is why if you have witches at home who slaughtered 50 years ago, there is a blood that was shed before they slaughtered. And that blood speaketh better things than the blood of bulls and anything that they can slaughter. Oh. Elijah entered and he began to download dimensions that were supposed to be expressed in New Testament and exercise them in the old. And he said, it shall not rain unless at my word. And the rain never came because the essence of shutting the heaven was to bring revival in the land. Now, sometimes God will use war, plagues, or famines to get the attention of men to himself. And even sometimes he might use leaders. You might get a wrong leader. Like the revival in Nigeria is steered by the government because the, the government does not favor church so the church must trust in their God I don't want to go further because we are not mature to receive prophecy men that are here they will tell you they know what God said but they never went on Facebook because they were told these men are not mature to receive prophecy they still approach me from democracy not theocracy they don't 
know I can use Babylon, a wicked nation that serves idol to punish Israel, a nation with my name. That's why he said to Habakkuk, I'm about to do a thing in your day. If I tell you, you will not believe it. Why? I am coming in my sovereignty, not democratic card. And so Elijah never came to be a tourist. He never came to see a backslidden Israel and live it in a backslidden state. Someone must get tired with the status of Kenya. How much shall we hear of revival? Someone must ascend and stand where Elijah stood and say, Lord, give me Kenya or I die. Take me out. Why am I here to build five bedroom houses? and buy Prados and die like a man that never lived. I refuse. My voice shall be published. Even if I carried a chair, it will be published in the channels of revival that I was a participator and a partaker. And the man began to journey. He said, before I open the heavens, there must be a coming back. Because when Jezebel came, she came with her idols and her gods. The throne was hijacked because the thrones are sustained by spirits. Presidents know it's either you are endorsed by demons or the Holy Ghost. Because the thrones attract spirits. Because the spirits are territorial. So the spirit that want to rule Kenya will begin to invade the throne of the presidency. And Ahab was a king in title, but Jezebel was a king in function. Because the altars of Jezebel were stronger than the altars of Yahweh. And that is why Elijah had to arise. One man, I want to tell you, this number is too much for Kenya. It is too much. I say it is too much. One man. Someone said when you set yourself on fire, it is suicide. When we set you on fire, it is murder. When God sets you on fire, it is revival. Let, ah, let there be a one man today. Be set on fire. God was not relying on intercessors. He was relying on one man. One man. One man can change a family. One man can change Nairobi. Oh, we have a blueprint. One man is changing Nakuru. One man. One man. One man. One man. And Elijah understood spiritual patterns. He realized there was an ancient abandoned altar in Mount Kame. He never gathered them in camel without revelation. And he told them, come with your sacrifice. Let the true God answer by fire. And they came with their rituals. They erected an altar. The one that calls a meeting is the one that runs it. This was not their meeting. It was Elijah's meeting. He began to tell them what to do. And they were foolish enough to fall under his authority. That's how they lost their authority. They went to a location that had an existing altar. May the Lord locate us to abandon altars. Altars of righteousness. Altars of prayer. Altars of commitment to the work of God. And when they arrived there, he gave them time. And they did whatever they did. But there was a revelation. The Bible says, he told them, maybe your God is asleep. But the Bible says, when the hour of the sacrifice of oblation came, when you come from God, you understand the program of where you came from. The man checked his watch and he realized, right now in Zion, they are waiting for a man to sacrifice. So the attention of God is on earth. Who shall release an offering at this hour of oblation? It is called sensitivity to the times of God. 
Anyone that is in Kenya, they will tell you, God has broken the walls of denomination. He's no longer raising life church. He's no longer raising your denomination. He's raising the body. And he said, now guys, my hour has come. And the Bible says he repaired the altar. Repairing, not building. He knew there were transactions in this area. And if there is an existing altar, there is an existing portal. Because altars open portals. If there is an existing portal, when I met the I am, I realized there is a dimension of him called the consuming fire. That is one I want to call. And he told them, lay a sacrifice. He told them, pour water. Four gallons. Three times. Four is the number of creation. Three is the number of the Holy Ghost. Twelve is the number of government. So creation can only be redeemed by the Holy Spirit through a governmental anointing, apostles. And he said, poor. I know from evangelistic preaching, we always say he complicated the miracle. Now let us divert and view it apostolically. I know that is where you shout, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not complication. The man understands spiritual disciplines. In this level, he's a prophet. He knows prophetic numerology. He knows to a prophet, numbers are not figures. They are codes in the spirit. And so he said the fourth. And when it was done, that offering of oblation in the Jewish context it was the offering of outpouring revival does not come when men do not pour their lives upon the altar in the time of oblation the fire is attracted by that dimension and after that activity he could now call the God of the heavens and the Bible says he put his head between the knees. It is called the posture of prayer. I want to believe by Friday our postures will change. I still see CEOs in the gathering and managers. By Friday there is a posture called putting your head between your knees. And he told the servant, go to the sea where it can release vapor because clouds are fed when there is vapor leaving earth. It is called the hydrological cycle. There must be a source of water and out of your belly shall flow streams. Streams of water out of our belly. We are the source of water. But what are we releasing to our clouds? There must be heat to cause evaporation. So that something can feed the clouds. And when the clouds are full, they pour. And he said, sir, what have you seen? He said, I've seen the cloud the size of a man's fist. He said, where I stand, that fist is a picture of the fivefold coming together. The prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, and the pastors are now together. He said that unity is what causes the anointing to flow. Allow me to open something and listen carefully. The oil comes from the head to the beards, to the garment, to the skirts. That high priest was Aaron. A picture of Christ the garment of Jesus did not have any hem it was seamless and Jesus being the head the oil must come to a seamless garment when there is separation of the fivefold 
The oil does not flow because Zion does not waste. The garment covered the body. The five graces are released as a covering to the body. Let me go slowly. We are the body of Christ. And the fivefold graces are the garment that covers. That is why Christ cannot affect the body by ignoring his garment. When the apostles had his reason, when they entered in the empty tomb, they took the garment. Peter and John, they left. But there was a woman, Mary Magdalene, who never went for the garment. She went for the body. She said, where have you laid his body? Why? Why? Because the burden is moving from garments to body. And that woman did not have an ambulance. She said, where have you laid the body that I may carry it? Are there people that are willing to bear the weight of the body? Ah, if Apostle Kemani will tell you how much it costed him to organize the prayer caravan, are there people that are willing to bear the weight? I want to know how much this meeting will cost because we come and sit, but someone is asking, where is the body that I may carry it? Ah, and Jesus appeared upon that woman and Jesus said woman and he turned and she said she thought it was one of the workers but when she heard the voice because the Bible says my sheep no we may not have met him physically but we know when he speaks when she heard the voice she said Rabboni And that woman was sent to the apostles. The ministry of the body was not pioneered by Peter. It was pioneered by an ex-prostitute by the name of Mary Magdalene. She's the one who went with the message of resurrection sent by Christ. The first apostle was a woman. Okay. She met the resurrected Jesus before the Father. She wanted to touch. Jesus said, I have not yet ascended. Oh. Don't write us off. We have histories. Some of us were prostitutes in the world, but we are the ones with the burden for the body. Ah, she never came for the title apostle. She never came for the garment. She came for the body. This revival is not about titles. It's about men that have a burden for the body. Oh, Jesus. It is about men that are saying, I know what Reverend Julian is doing. He's not through growing his church. He has a pattern for the body. And I share the same pattern. And you call and ask, what do you want, sir? Because now he's not raising a denomination. He's gathering his body. Or don't you know, the man that opened the eyes of Peter was not an apostle. After the Damascus encounter, Paul, Paul. Did I say Peter? I was still in the old move. Paul. But I thank the fathers. Now Paul's eyes were not opened by Jesus. But Jesus was responsible for the blindness. Jesus said, There is a man from me in the city now even let me explain Paul has entered territories that have no owners and is persecuting the church but as he enters Damascus he knows there is a man 
that has secured Damascus in the spirit. He has entered another person's territory. There are places you cannot prosper until you locate the owner of the portal. I know this meeting has business people. There are towns you enter and God will tell you, look for an offering and locate the owner of portals. Because there is a man that has labored in this town. If you sow in his labors, you will prosper. Because what he has conquered, you will conquer. I ran a ministry in Lemuru. And I bless the Lord, the woman of God is here. Mom, Emily, she's here. You can stand, mom. This woman from Nakuru, she was doing meetings in Limuru, praying for the city. And I remember the Lord told me, look for five men in this town and honor them. And I had the fifth seed. Then one day she was passing by, she came to church, knelt on the altar and began to tell the Lord, thank you for what we were praying for has arrived. The Lord told me, so. Because your success is because someone founded something in the spirit and you entered, now you are harvesting. And that's why you can't just open a branch. Look for the man. Listen, do you know why Abraham told Lot, wherever you want to go, go. The man had raised enough altars in Canaan. He was the owner of the land. After Lot went, the Lord told Abraham, stand on that altar as far as your eyes can see in the north, in the east, in the west, in the south, it is yours. Meaning that even where Lot lived, Okay, if you are doubting me, when Lord was captured, if he was not in charge of that territory, he will not have gone for war. A man was captured in his territory. We are territorial. We are moving from location. Can he say to Iko Kawa West, Apana, our territory? Our territory. And so this man is sent to Ananias. And the Lord tells him now, that is the man to open your eyes. Who was he? Not a bishop. Not an apostle. A disciple. This revival. Some of us will release fire. But ordinary disciples will begin to do extra I don't know if I have disciples today but I came to declare the days of gathering and attend that bears a man's name are over. This tent will bear the name of Jesus. Men will gather not caring who is preaching. They will know even disciples have territories. And that's why Rev said engineers will arise this is what I had in the spirit when I was praying <sighs> by the way what we are praying for is revival but what God is setting on motion is revolution okay let me come slowly revival comes to the church to help men rise because if we are to touch the seven mountains you can't touch it by tongues go and study the French revolution it threw away the monarchy system and brought the democratic space systems are not overthrown by revival they are overthrown by revolution the kingdom is about a civilization. You don't change civilization by revival. Revival heals lands and people. Revolution overthrows altars. I 
don't like my time. Because I've not mentioned some characters. Who came from God? Samuel came from God. The Bible says the young priest slept next to the altar. While Eli went to his usual place. There is a place called usual place. You know you are recliner watching Manchester. Usual. Watching so operas and Netflix. Usual. Revival will not come in your sitting room. Eli knew the voice of God. But he was not where God speaks. Samuel did not know the voice of God. But he was too hungry to be where God speaks. I met some young people, I told them, this generation is not looking for a concert. They are looking for God, but we have given them DJs and artists. Why? We are coming from our usual place. They are coming from a place of hunger. And Samuel had a voice, he went, said, have you called me? He said, no, I've not called you, go and sleep. The man, Meaning that he was not sleeping. He was waiting on the Lord. The Bible says the word of the Lord was rare. There were no visions. Because the pattern of the Old Testament. God communicated through dreams and visions. And there was no revelation. So that tells you. When Samuel was being raised by Eli. Eli looked at the lectures on the voice of God. He said why teach the voice of God and he's no longer speaking. Bypass that. Let me teach you how to slaughter and sacrifice. He has not spoken for a time. So this lecture will not help you. The second time he went, I said, have you called me? And I said, no, I've not called you, sir. Say, go and sleep. That time, have you called me? He said, well, there are days we used to hear that God will speak from his altar. Maybe he's still speaking. He said, sir, you have blown more than two opportunities. I am not sure whether I will speak again. But if he speaks, tell him, here I am. There is a place called here. He said, if he speaks. And I want to tell you, Kenya, he's speaking. Even now, he's speaking. The question is, where? Where are you? Are you in the usual place? Or are you where he has been speaking? There is a generation hearing voices. And they don't know that voice but they are where he's speaking. There are some young people that are passionate. They don't even know to pray. But they are still in a place saying, Lord, if you can speak again. Here we are, speak again. And I want to believe in this meeting. The voice of the Lord will begin to thunder again in our generation. I sense at this hour, the Lord is calling men back to their place of ordination. There are people that threw the prophetic garment. There are people that used to pray. But because of warfare, they abandoned the place. Listen, in the realms of the spirit, prayer does not ascend as English. It ascends as incense. You abandon the place of incense. Zachariah met God at the altar of incense. And the Lord began to answer prayers. He prayed long time. Because every tear we shed in his presence. Are captured in a bottle. Maybe Zachariah could not even remember. When he told the Lord to bless him with a child. Because Elizabeth was barren. The Lord fell upon him. And when the Lord fell. He still went to minister. On the altar of incense. That altar does not receive petitions and supplication. Altar of incense does not answer to bread. It's an altar that is about God. And I discovered when we go beyond bread and begin to pursue God, bread will pursue us. And as he was ministering there, an angel showed up. 
and said, uh, the Bible says at the right hand of the altar, and the angel said, your prayer has been answered. Maybe he looked at the many prayers he has ever prayed, and then he had, now you shall be with a child. And because of biological timelines, he asked the angel, what are you saying? The angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand, meaning that, in the presence of the Lord, where Elijah stood, Gabriel was standing. That area attracts celestial and terrestrial beings. Men of this area and men of the heavens can stand. Where Elijah stood before addressing Ahab is where Gabriel stood. Look at their patterns. When Zechariah questioned the prophecy, he said, I will deal with the government that wants to mess your prophecy. You will not speak. And he was told the child will be called John. Because the child is not coming in the identity of the father Zechariah. He's coming to pioneer a new move in the spirit. There will be a change of names in this conference. We are not pioneering the old move. We are coming. <sighs> the culture dictated that you name a child after his father. But the father of this child was not Zachariah. It was God. This child had an ordination from God. And he said, John shall be born. The same angel showed up to Mary. And Mary asked the same question Zachariah asked. How will this be? And the angel sat down and said, listen woman, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Listen, a priest and a virgin are in different ranks. How an angel deals with me is not how he'll deal with you. There are things I ought to say, amen. The angel explained to Mary how it will be. But to Zachariah, it was shut up. All of us can be in the same presence. But some of us, we deal with God from the inner courts. There is the outer court, the holy court, and the holies of holies. The demands and encounters are different. Let me share one scripture. My time is up. One scripture to show you how John, who came from God, survived. John 5, 33 to 35. And that is our survival. We are going to read it. John 5, 33 to 35. Are you learning something? I am okay. If you have not written any notes, there are, there are meetings where data is captured in your heart. If you can read, let's read. One, two, three. Listen. The assignment of John was to be a witness. Jesus is saying the man that was sent walked in the assignment. Because there is a gap of sending and manifesting and that's where assignments are hijacked some of you you ought to be a prophet but you are selling mangoes so you came from God but you were hijacked yet I do not receive testimony from man but I say these things that you may be saved everybody read Listen, that was the secret of John. Number one, he was the burning. Number two, shining. You can never shine if you are not burning. The reason I'm sweating, you see these lights? They have something called filament. When current enters, it begins to burn. And as it burns, it produces light. And that light has heat. You will never see cockroaches on a hot stove. Some of you are too cold for life. You don't need deliverance. Every metal and physical thing has a melting point. 
The problem is the degree of your fire. There are cancers that don't melt on our father. They melt after seven days of prayer. By the time you are done on the seventh day, the cancer has melted. You don't need psychological counseling. That depression is demonic oppression. You need to burn more. Ah! There was a burning. I know we always say, arise and shine. If you are not burning, even the sun is the hot test. You can't, there's a level you can't go to beyond because you will melt because of the heat. There are men of God, one encounter with their lives, you will not recover from their experience. Why? Where they are coming from is where seraphim stand. Seraphims, that word means the fiery ones. If the fiery ones stand there, you cannot stay there and refuse to burn. I am old school. There are some old bulbs used to be called 75 watts, 100 watts. You put them and then you are told, go and change it. If you handle that bulb with your bare hands, the kind of damage, because the bulb was burning and then lighting. Hey, we can't affect the world if we are not burning. How do men burn in prayer? Look at any man that is a light. I studied the prayer pattern of one of the Nigerian fathers with the biggest church. And I was told for the last 40 years, he has been fasting for six months, burning half a year. You can't ignore his light. Kenya, the world is not looking for cold men. The world is looking for burning men. It is too dark in Kenya. Where are the burning saints who can release a light? Where are the burning saints in the corporate? Where are the burning saints in the government? The world is too cold. My time is up. Stand up and begin to buy. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, who say this I want us to speak in tongues for only two minutes but hold on no one can lay hands on you when I came the whole week as I was praying the Lord gave me that one scripture sent from God yesterday night is when he opened it up for me and this word I had in my spirit that there are men in this meeting that have abandoned what the Lord deposited in their spirits. In this atmosphere, prophetic graces are going to pop up. Ears that used to hear will hear again. Eyes that used to see in the spirit will see again. And God gathered us here for what I call spiritual incitement. There can never be riot if there is no inciting. The Lord is inciting our spirits to go back to our churches and begin a riot. It is either revival or riot. They say these are the men 
that have brought riots in our cities? Will it be published in Kenya that there are men who brought riots, but to them it was revival? Just lift up your hands to God. No one is going to lay hands on you. The Lord knows what is upon your life. People that are banned on the place of prayer. People that are banned on the place of prayer. At this hour, there is a release. There is a release. Listen, it will not come by prayer. Even those in the overflow, I feel it in my system. I feel it in my system. And this is what I'm hearing. Number one, there is a restoration anointing. There are people that used to touch dimensions, but they touch them no more. Today you are leaving this place touching those dimensions again. Lift those hands to Zion. Don't even pray for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I call out now every woman of prayer, every man of prayer, that went to their usual place wherever they are let them now receive a fresh fire a fresh fire a fresh fire it is coming it's already happening a new fire of prayer you are here you know your dimensions you abandon that place. Fear is a release now of a fresh action. Your prayer altar will not be full of ashes. You are beginning to burn. You will burn again. You will burn again. You are raised to deliver your family. You will burn again. You will burn again. Listen, it's already happening. Some of you, the fire is too much. The womb of prayer is being opened right now. Every barrenness is being lifted right now. I am hearing miracles. Some of you used to pray for the sick and they will get healed. Your hands were ordained for this dimension and some of you you are receiving that dimension now wherever you are take it take it take it the days of miracle are not over cancer will bow diabetes will bow HIV will bow people will be discharged out of HDU and ICU there is a healing anointing. Finally, just listen to me. Some of you are here. You are young. Maybe you are like me. You thought you are just a rapper. You are just a dancer. You are just a photographer. But in there, Gods of eternity, before I formed thee, I knew thee. I just want to pray one prayer. And this is for every young soul, and even the old, that the Lord will program your life to the path of your ordination. There are next preachers here, apostles and prophets, evangelists, 
and teachers of the world. Some of them don't even know it. But something will come upon you as a confirmation that I carry an office. Lift up your hands. It is already happening. Wherever you are, the apostolic grace is being released at this hour. Every apostle, take the fire now. Wherever you are, take the fire. Take the fire. Every prophet in our midst, prophets, prophets, I call you out now. I call you out. Let your eyes be open. Let your ears be open. Teachers of the word. Teachers of the word. It's already happening. I shall stay alert. There is an ordination. There is an ordination. People are landing on the path of the ordination. Let the shepherds arise. Let the evangelists arise. Shatayaba. Kayabo Shata. Kelamanos Emperescopaya. Zaria Irama Shataya. Let me put this very clear. Let me put it clearly. Please, if you sense an anointing, don't open a church. Church is a different enterprise. God can call you as an apostle in the marketplace. Some of the business people, you just need a prophetic eye. To know the terrains of time. So God can call you as a prophet. So that you can understand seasons. The dimension of the sons of Issachar. God can call you as a teacher. And as an evangelist. The final prayer. Hi. This is heavy. Because. There has been. There has been a cry for revival. And I hear the Holy Ghost tell me, some of the carriers are here. They came in this meeting crying for revival. I don't know who they are, but they are people who have been laboring in the spirit saying Lord could this be the meeting could this be the meeting where you are going to reveal yourself I don't know where they are but one thing I know he answers the expectations of the Russians and at this hour I call now for personal encounters. Personal encounters. I refuse to talk of a God I have not encountered. I refuse to enter Egypt without a fire encounter. Now! Kaya Shataya Belo Shada Le enemy Satoria Recamanos Passono Passono We refuse to go to high schools Preach of a Christ We have never encountered We refuse to go on our Facebook Share testimonies Of a God we have not Encountered at this hour Yeah. 